SwiftUI's pickers serve multiple purposes, and exactly how they look depends on which device you're running on, and also the context in which the picker is used. In this project, we're asking users to select how much the check amount came to, but then also to select how many people that check is split across. First, pickers like text fields require some kind of property they can bind to, a two-way binding, and we already added this number of people property just for that purpose. And so now we're gonna make a picker containing a range of values between two up to 99 inclusive and loop inside them to make a picker of all those values. So modify the first section of your form to include a picker like this one. I'll say picker called number of people, people spelled correctly, with a selection bound to dollar two-way binding number of people. And inside there, we'll loop over all those values, making each one a text view. So we'll say for each two up to 100, do text of, and then we'll do three interpolation, dollar zero people, like that. Now I'll press uh, Option Command P to reload my preview. And we should see the picker running in a second. Let's find out. It's having a little think. Boom, number of people. So if you want to run it, you can do. I'll press Command R so you can see it bigger on my screen. Um, you should see a few things. First, a uh, new row, say number of people, with four people next to it. Uh, you'll see two little gray arrows next to that four people, which is the iOS way of signaling this row is tappable to show a bunch of menu options. Um, but look in particular the fact that it's saying four people here, when we gave our number of people property a default value of two. Um, we're gonna fix these problems in a second, but so the easy one first. Um, why does it say four people when we actually gave this thing a default value of two? And really what's happening here is when we create the picker, we use four each two up to 100. And that counts from two up to 100 rating rows each time. And that means our zeroth row, the first row being created in the picker menu, contains two people. And the first one contains three, the second one contains four, the third one contains five, and, and so forth, it counts upwards. And so when we gave number of people a, a default value of two, we were making that zero, one, two in the menu, so two, three, four people. That's what's happening here. So though it's a bit brain bending, the fact that our UI shows four people rather than two people is in fact not a bug. Now pickers come with a whole bunch of different styles depending on how you want them to behave. For example, later on we'll use a, a, a segmented control to handle a tip percentage picker because uh, it's a good fit there. There aren't many options, only a handful like these five options here. So you can fit them all in a single uh, segmented view. One popular style is called a navigation link picker, which moves the users to a new screen to select from a large number of values. It's helpful they can scroll around very quickly. To try it here, we're gonna modify this picker to include a new modifier. We'll do dot pick a style of dot navigation link, like so. I'll press Command R again, and it won't work quite as expected. You can see now the two arrows are now replaced by a single disclosure indicator, an arrow pointing to the right, a little, a little chevron, but the whole row's grayed out. Uh, you try and tap on it, nothing will happen. What SwiftUI wants to do is and also why it's grayed out in the first place, is show a new view with the options to select different numbers of people. That's what it wants to do. What if you want to do is show a new screen, but it can't do that because uh, we need a new view around this called navigation stack. If you remember, nav stack shows titles and shows buttons, but also has the ability to show and hide new views very, very easily. You can just slide them in from the right or left, depending on your language. And so, before form, like around form, we're gonna add a navigation stack, like this, around the form. And again, just scroll down after the form, close the brace, it'll jump in, indenting straight away, it'll be easy to read. And now if you run the app again, you should see this works correctly. Uh, it's not grayed out anymore, it's nice and colorful like usual, or at least black. I can press this thing, in comes a new view, number of people with four people selected. I'll choose 10 and it jumped back to between 10 correctly. So it's working really, really nice. You can see, see the check mark even is what you have right now. It's a really nice way to select. But when you have many, many options, you can scroll through very, very quickly on a large screen, which is cool. 
What you're seeing here is really the importance of declarative user interface design. This means we say what we want rather than how to make every individual thing. We said, give me a navigation link picker style, not now make a list of all our items, show a checkbox here and tapping it, da, 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 none of that stuff. We just said, give me a navigation link style. Now the question is, do you prefer the style or do you prefer the old menu style we had previously? Um, it's down to you. It's your wrap, you get to choose. In my case, I happen to think the menu style is nicer, it's a bit simpler on the screen, it's kind of the fault as well, but you please go whichever one you prefer. But before we're done with this step, I'm gonna keep the navigation stack and add a little title to our form down here. We'll say navigation title is we split, the name of our project. Let's look much nicer on the screen, boom. Now it's really tempting when you're learning to think that you want to attach that modifier to the navigation stack. That means writing it down here, like this, we split, rather than putting it here. And that won't work. If you press Command R now and run the code, you're gonna see it runs back with no title. You want to attach it to the thing inside the navigation stack, like so, it'll work much, much better. And the reason is that these views are able to show many views inside them. Push this view, then this one, then this one, da, 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 each with their own title. And it'll animate the title on and off correctly with a nice back button each time. And so by attaching the thing inside the navigation stack, we're allowing iOS to change titles freely.